Right, our topic for today is about uh, resurrection power, the purpose, and the process of resurrection. Okay. Alam niyo po yung isang tatay that he planned, his plan for his children ay uh, I know makakalagay ang mga magulang na kung ikaw ay isang magulang at grabe ang plan mo sa kanyang mga anak, ayun mo ano. Pinagplan mo na pag dumaki, binigyan mo sila ng parang maging assured ng security and then suddenly yung anak mo ay fail. May kurot sa puso ng mga mabula. Dahil yung kanyang plano na minsan akala ng mga anak ay against sa mga anak. Pero ang plano ko na magulang laging mabuti para sa kanyang mga anak. And it's exactly what happened when God created heaven and earth. Kinilate niyo muna lahat eh. Pre-repare niya yung heaven, the earth, the land, the sea, the fruits, the, 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 the birds, the animals. And then he created man. Before he created man, it was all provided. May nano niya, nang create niya ang kanyang mga anak, nandun na lahat ang pangangailangan. Safe, prosperous, and a peaceful garden of Eden that symbolizes the presence of God. But then we know what happened. That Adam and Eve transgressed. Nagkasala sinuway ang kalooban ng ating tatay. At yun po ang naging, ang nangyari kung bakit nagkaroon tayo ng sin nature. Because even from the start, the father already gave this warning to Adam and Eve. Sabi niya doon, You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for the moment that you eat from it, you will surely die. Dalawang puno sa gitna ng paraiso. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sabi ng Lord, kainin niyo na lahat ng limang libo, sampung limang puno. Huwag lang ang puno ng knowledge of good and evil. Kaya ang tao, pumalin ang bawal. Hindi <laughs> gusto. Kadami ng puno, eh, isa na lang ang pinagbawal. But we know what happened that Adam and Eve, because of Eve, na pinukso ng serpent, pinukso ng jablo, and you, if we study the, the history, it was all about power, about the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Ito yung naman tatlong to ang ginagamit lagi ng Diablo. Kapag gusto kanyang sirain, kapag gusto kanyang item, dahil na lang ito sa tatlong to. Aakitin ka sa pride of life, power, authority. Aakitin ka sa lust of the flesh, Makikita mo maganda, masarap. And, ano ba yung isa? Pride of life, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Pag pinignan mo, very tempting. Hindi po magbibigay ang kalaban ng kamit. Magandang package, tingnan niya. Winner and the ten. But, hindi po siya, hindi siya ako mag-a-mag-bibake ng, ng isang bagay na hindi kaka-akit. Kaya ako nag-fall ng tao. And what happens that the fall of man, it brought us because of one man's offense, sabi ng Bible. Through one man's offense, death reigned through many lives. And this is the fall of man na detach tayo ngayon sa ating tatay. Nagkaroon tayo ngayon ng 
Nagbitihan tayo ng sarili ng independence. Ayaw po nga. You remember the, the parable of the prodigal son? Father, give me my uh, inheritance. Alam nyo, kapag kinuha mo na pala ang inheritance mo, you are declaring independence from the source. At ang gusto ba lang yung parte na yun, na akin na yung parte ko. At kapag naubos yun, nawawala tayo. This is what exactly happened to man. Naging independent sa Diyos. Nas, na, naging walay tayo sa source. And that's why the Bible is saying, ni-reject natin ang Diyos, ni-replace natin ang Diyos, and we were separated from God. And that's why, so mercy, because His mercy is great, ayaw ng Diyos. Hindi po gaya ng tao ang Diyos na kapag nagkasala na at na, na, nagkaroon na ng pangit na pangyayari, ayaw na. But the Lord, He created us, hindi niya tayo iniwan. Hindi niya tayo ni-reject. Pwede naman natin, pwede niya naman sabihin, mag-create ka lang ako ng bagong heaven and earth, ng bagong mga tao. But no, God, when He created, hindi niya tinatapon. And His plan for mankind is always the restoration. After that separation, after that fall of man, ang Bible po, even from the start, He already confessed or declared kung paano niya i-redeem ang tao. Lahat po ng ginagawa ng Lord natin ngayon is to restore us from our original, I mean, to our original position because umalis tayo sa ating dating kalalagayan wherein God provided everything. He, he made sure what we need is covered. But man declared independence. And that's why the whole Jesus Christ He prepared a plan to restore mankind to go back to his original position. And that's what we're going to uh, tackle today. Kasi maraming tao, maraming nauna lang tayo, ganun din tayo before. Maraming tao ang nag-aakala na kapag ikaw ay tinawag ng Lord o kaya may nag-share sa'yo, or my prayer meeting, or my kung anong gawain, kala mo ay puputuli na ang katligayahin mo ng Diyos. Kill-joy ang Diyos. Kaya na tumatawa, ay mga burn against and mga alay na alay. Ganun din tayo before. Tinutuya-tuya natin because we don't understand. Yes, I mean, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Wala tayong kaalaman lang na nais lang ng Panginoon ay ibalik sa atin ng nawala. Ibalik kung ano yung dati nating provisions sa Kanya. And that is His divine plan. Dahil nga sa ating uh, ignorance, sabi, may isang preacher na nagsabi, si, you know, Miles Monroe, that we are like sophisticated king. Nang Tagalog din. Mistikada So everyone must turn his way, kanya-kanya. Kasi 
nga hindi natin alam kung ano ang ating, ang anong plano ng Lord sa atin. Akala natin, yun na yung buhay. Bukas, butong pamamaya, butulog, magising na kain, pagpasok sa opisina. Pero naman, hapon na naman, ang bilis. Bututulog, pinabukasan. It was our life for many years. And then we were trying to get life out of anything without realizing that our Father has a great plan for all of us. And one day someone shared to you. One day you heard the gospel. And now you're here sitting on these chairs and listening. Binalik ka ng Panginoon. Dahil mahal na mahal ka, matagal ka nang inaabangan. Tago ka nang tago. Iwas ka nang iwas. Yung pala bibigyan ka lang naman ng napakagandang regalo. Hallelujah. So now, from from the from the start, alam niyo po ang Christianity. Ito lang po ang ang mga masasabi natin siguro ng religion. Even from the start, God already pronounced our salvation. In Genesis chapter three, sinabi niya na kung kung paano tayo maliliwas. Dahil sa pangyayari na tayo ay nag-transgress tayo, nagkasala tayo, ay nag-disobey at lumayo sa Panginoon, sabi niya, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, talking about the serpent, and between your seed and her seed. Did you notice? Wala namang seed ang babae. Okay. Because it was talking about the virgin birth of Mary. A son or the seed of a woman is the one who's going to put an end. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Meron na pong prinuklaim na salvation para po sa atin even before the start of the blood of the Lord. So, nangyari ang call of God. And if you will notice from then on, ang lahat po ng command ng Panginoon are backward instructions. It, it is already about His divine plan to take us back to Him how to return. If you will see now the Bible, it's all about coming back to Him, restoring mankind to Him. And, matikita niyo po, yung mga ginagamit na no word, you see, you know that the, the term uh, prefix? 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 Bago yung ikabit sa word. Bago inayos? Before a word. A grammatical stem that you add, di ba, may root word, and you add a prefix, either before or after, and it changed the meaning of it, yung word na yun. Right? Sino na English ano dito? One or one. So it's the word stem. To understand the word, you remove the prefix. So which one are prefix? Pro means, it's a prefix to go forward. Tama ba? Re, to go backward. Dali niya may tingnan yun. Okay. So, prefix re, it will tell us to go back to our original state, to go back to our original position, back to original condition, and not and to go back, not forward, to go back to original relationships, to go back to God. And you will see, tingnan nyo, the prefix of God is re. Always coming back to Him. Lagi ang sinasabi ng Panginoon, come back. Return. Repent. Kaya nga repent. Pent house. Go back to your original position. A ruler with dominion. Diba sabi doon sa history of creation? Let us make man in our image and let them rule and let them have dominion over the creation of man. What is man that you are mindful 
mind of Him, that you give Him the authority of, of, of all the works of your hands. Ganun ang posisyon ng tao. You will be, uh, you, we were given the authority over the works of His hand. Ang ibig sabihin, nung lahat ng create ng Lord, ay binigyan tayo ng kapangyarihan. But not to dominate people. Only with the things He created. Kaya yung mga dominante, mali yun. We were not created to dominate person, people, because our purpose is to have dominion over the works of the hands of the Lord. So, this four, we will just, we will just focus on this four to understand the plan of God. So, redemption, reconciliation, restoration, and we'll finish with the resurrection. Gusto niyo po ba yan? Amen! Amen. Alright, praise the Lord. Palakpakan po muna natin. When we talk about the word redeem, we start with redemption. Sabi kanina, prefix, binagyan mo ang root word, inadan mo ng prefix, it changed the meaning. But when we talk about redeem, ang root word is? Deem. You know the meaning of deem? To own. To possess. So when we say redeem, to own it twice. So when God said you were redeemed by God, you used to be owned by God, and now He's again redeeming you the second time around to be His possession. So you used to be have done used to be mine, owned before. So that's exactly what happened. Mankind got lost, and Jesus brought us back to Him. We were redeemed by God. And that is what Ephesians 1 7 8. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Now we understand that we know we belong to God. Amen. You are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You don't own anything, actually. We don't own anything. We were redeemed and possessed yun tayo ngayon ng Panginoon today. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, you were redeemed. Hindi ka ni redeemed ng cheap price. You were redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Bakit po blood? Bakit po blood ang sinabi na we were redeemed by the blood? Because the law of God, the word of God says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Church, without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. 2,000 years ago, Jesus already shed His blood. That's why you are now forgiven. Amen. Amen. You are forgiven. Because without the blood, without the shedding of the blood, there is, one, there is no forgiveness. But since Jesus already shed His blood, that means we were already forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Yes. Ephesians 2, 9, And through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through His blood shed on the cross. Again, lumuksa na tayo dito sa reconcile, but we are talking here of through His blood the reconciled tayo sa tatay. Because of the blood of Jesus, ito na po yung ibinayad niya para po tayo ay magkaroon ng bagong relasyon sa Panginoon. And what do you mean by blood? Blood po kasi, kasi sabi niya kanina, napaka-importante ng blood, nasa dugo ang buhay. Pag naubusan ka po ng dugo, wala ka po yung buhay. A term of life, and that, that is a symbol of blood. So, Christ's death gave His 
love. That's, that's why He gave His life to us. That blood symbolizes that He gave His life to us. So shed His blood means redeemed by His death. Someone has to die on our place. That's why He died on our behalf. So, you were not just redeemed freely by grace. Yes, freely. Church, hindi po biro, hindi po cheap ang pinang-redeem sa atin because we were redeemed by the life, by the blood of Christ. Amen. Kaya sabi kanina ni, ni, ni Goods, huwag nating sayangin. Hindi masasayang ang dugo na ibulos ng Panginoon. Dahil meron tayong purpose, meron tayong uh, uh, plan ang Lord para sa atin. So when we say redeem, that means a basic act of owning you twice. Before kasi pag-aari tayo, nag-separate tayo now, He redeem us with the blood. And mankind is the only one who can sing to get you. Tayo lang po ang nilidin. Hindi naman po ang mga kung ang yan o sino. Tayo lang po, the Lord has redeem us, but He has to pay a price. And by the way, you can never redeem something that you don't own. You only redeem, alam mo po yung sasalaan, you redeem something na sinanlap mo, dati sarili mo, may binayaran mo ulit, kaya napunta ulit sa'yo. That's redemption. That's redeeming. Okay? Reconciliation. What about reconciliation? Ang dami-dami pong ministry sa church. Hindi naman po masama. Pero the Bible is only telling us one ministry, and that is to be a minister of the ministry of reconciliation. Maging ilaw ka, maging instrumento ka para ma-reconcile din ang iba sa Diyos, sa pagbigitan natin. Dahil na ko na lang tayo i-reconcile ng Panginoon. So, when you say reconciliation, consign, the word, root word is? Consign. To make one. Or to consolidate. So, reconcile is to restore to oneness. To bring two things back together. That's reconciliation. Father natin ang Diyos. Okay, because of Jesus, naging one tayo. Kaya ng prayer ni Jesus, Lord, that they may be one. As you and me are one. This, this people that I'm praying, may they all be one also like us. So reconciliation is to be reunited or re reconciled with the Father. Means we are now one. Bakit tayo naging one? We have now one spirit that is in us. He imputed His spirit in us. Ang spirit po nating daladala ngayon ay spirit po ni Cristo. The old has gone, the new has come. Our spirit is the spirit of Jesus Christ in us. We were reconciled. We became one. Romans 5, 11, Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. If you don't believe it, the Bible says so. The Bible says so. The Bible you already reconciled. <laughs> Lalo na po ang bumabagsak-bagsak na nagkakasala. But the Bible is telling us, you are already reconciled. He is our Father. Hindi na po siya galit sa atin because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We are now one with the Father. Kahit po, sino naman po ang magulang pag nagkasala, hindi mo naman i-dispone niya. Di ko ba, mahal mo pa rin. Ganun po ang tatay natin. Kahit nagkakamal mo, mahal po tayo ng tatay natin. Amen. And that's why we should not fear God. We should not separate together. The more na pag nagkakamal ka ng problema, lumapit ka ng lalo. 
kumapit ka lalo sa tatay because the tatay will never reject you. He will even teach us. At yun ang sinasabi, conviction ng Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict us. Kasabihin siya yung mali, pero hindi ka itatakwil. The, the devil will condemn you. You're no longer worth it. Kasi church, church ka ba? Tuturo, turo ka. E exhort, exhort ka. E pray, pray ka. That's the condemnation from the devil. But when it is the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it will always say, mali yung anak, isasaktan ka dyan. Don't do it. So iba ang approach po ng alaban sa Diyos. Kaya pag narinig niyo po minsan, kasi nagkakatakin po ang jablo sa mind. Pag nakikita mo, o oh, nararamdaman mo, kinukondem ka, hindi yan galing sa Diyos. Galing din sa kalaban. Kapag sinasabi mo, wala ka ng saysay, wala kang kwenta, wala kang pag-asa, di mo ang kuya. Kaya mo kayo magkakondem, di ba? Kasi ito ang nasa Lord. The Lord restores, the Lord convicts, the Lord has reconciled us. Amen. Amen. How did God reconcile us? Look at this. Church. Alright. The ministry of reconciliation. How did God reconcile us? Para maging, ano tawag dyan, para maging kampante or confident tayo. Look at this verse. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 says that God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, through Christ. How? Not counting people's sins against Him. Amen. 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 Hindi tinitignan ngayon ng Diyos ang kasalanan. Hindi binilang, hindi ka paruho sa according sa kasalanan mo. Tapos na sana tayo kung kasal according sa kasalanan. The word say, He reconciled us in Christ. Meaning, hindi niya tinitignan yung kasalanan mo ngayon dahil chinarge niya na si Jesus ng kasalanan. Amen. Amen. He reconciled in Christ. He put all the charges in Christ. He was judged. He was whipped. He was uh, binugbog siya lahat ng kasalanan. Nag-suffer siya. Kaya sinabi, He reconciled the world to Himself in Christ. Ipinatong kay Kristo ang charges sa iyo. Kinuha ni Lord. At hindi na binilang ngayon ang kasalanan mo. Dahil, hindi dahil okay na, kundi meron ibang kumuha. Kaya hindi mo pwede sabihin, grace, 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 ay pwede ka na magkasala. Paano mo i-respond ang isang taong nagmahal sa'yo na wala ka ng pag-asa, wala tayong nasa kadiliman tayo, binayaran ka, binigyan ka pa rin ng importansya. Do you think you will continue sinning or loving that person? Di ba? So, the grace of God is for us to have a new life. Not to continue in sin, but to make us realize that our sin was put, was charged, imputed to Jesus na at kinuha ni Lord para lang ikaw ay makalaya, para lang ikaw ay makalabas, ikaw lahat ay mag-benefit ngayon. You were given another chance. You were given another life. Consequently, sabi ng Bible, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of His house. What is man? Ano naman ang ginawa natin para gawin tayo ng anak ngayon ng Diyos? Gawin kang miyembro ng kanyang household. But we did because of Jesus. That's why Jesus is being exalted. The name above all names, every name will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Because through Him, we became a member of the household of God. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, member ka na ngayon. Member ka na ngayon.
What he did, he brought us back to our homes. Kung baga, ibinalik yung mga passport natin. Di ba yung sinishare niya sa katabi niya? Huwag niyo yung biro-biro. That is true. The Bible is that is so. Pag sinabing household ka, yung word ka ng household, totoo ko mo. Sinabing reconciled ka naman, totoo mo. Na hindi binibilang ngayon ang kasalanan, na totoo rin ngayon. Kasi pag may nagsasalanan ang kasalanan ang household. Once, ito tayo doon eh. Kaya nga po now, we have to preach what God has done. Huwag mo nang i-condemn, nang i-condemn ang mga tao kasi si Kristo kinondemn na. What we have to do now is understand what Christ has done to us so that we will become now partners. Through Him, we will have a newness of life. Para maging malakas ang church. Pag pinag-usapan mo ng pinag-usapan ang kahinaan ng church, hihina at hihina at yan. Hindi nga yun ang tatay, it's mga magnanakaw! Magnanakaw! behaviors will be aligned to the Christ, to the likeness of Christ Jesus. Because of, He restored us with the oneness. So reconciled means to be to be one. Alright, number three, restoration. So when we talk about restoration, what's the, or restore, what's the root word? Restore. Restore. 
hindi sari-sari store lang. Okay. Full storehouse. Complete, not missing, everything present, everything you need, you have. Amen. The Bible was, no, minsan, pag sinabi mo lang itong restore, ibinalik na sa iyo ang lahat ng kailangan mo, ang lahat ng bagay na, na missing sa iyo before. Sabi ng Bible, when you are restored, pati yung missing part, it was already restored to you. Amen. Kaya hindi totoo yung mga, sabi-sabi ng mga kapartner na, I will complete you. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> totoo yung si Lord lang po, kapag ka-complete siya. Ibinalik na ng Lord sa atin. Sabihin na naman yun sa katabi mo. You are already restored. Hello. Full house. You know what Jeremiah's plan promised? Through Jeremiah, the Lord promised, But I will restore you to heaven. It was before Jesus. Now it is finished. You were restored to health. Amen. And heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast before Zion for whom no one cares. But now it was restored to us. Health was restored. Healing was restored. That's why if we are sick, something is missing. But we can claim that. Yeah. We claim healing, we claim health, we claim fitness. Kung so, pag-pray niyo po ang katabi mo, pag-pray niyo po ang kapatid, declare mo po siya na yung ating na may na-receive, dapat yung isa po ang nalakaw. that we have carried for long time, sinasabi na rin ng Panginoon, yung anger, maybe divorce, whatever na nangyari, He took away the past today. And He already gave us peace. He already gave us, all we have to do is to give it and declare it. Peace, hindi nyo na ano eh, magulo nga eh, declare mo na. And it will happen. Confess, and then it will manifest. You know, this one also, I think you this will be your favorite part. You know, I'm going to restore the Panginoon sa atin. It's probably going to restore their fortunes and have compassion in them. Even for riches, prosperity, all these fortunes are already restored in the spiritual realm. All we have to do is declare Huwag tinignan mo yun ang bulsa mo, paano ang fortune? Wala nang laman. Because if you're talking of the physical, let's talk on the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, we are already given fortunes, prosperity, and all the things that we need. But we need to believe it. To have access, believing and confessing it, we release it in the physical. Yes! Hallelujah. Restore it. Ask yourself, Lord, that we may return with your days as of old, sabi ni, sa application ni Jeremiah. It was all. So that's why material wealth is also restored to take care of our life. Amen. You take prosperity now. Amen. 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 Amen.
Correct. Okay. Correct means to stand up, to be alive, to be correct, and to stand up again. Kung ikaw ay natumba for now, God has restored resurrection. So resurrection is to be alive. You can come back from what you were in. You can rise up from where you fell down over. You can become what you used to be. Why? How? So, ibig ko sabihin, tayo ngayon ay mayroon ng bagong life. Because before ka pong i-resurrect, kailangan ka muna mamatay. Kaya nga po, born again. Namatay na po yung old life natin. Now, we are raised back to a tinatawag na resurrection power is upon us. How? Look at this. In John 11, 25-26, Jesus said to her, Please read. I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Amen. Jesus said, I am. He is the resurrection. And the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, we should be for him physical life. Though he may die, he will live. He shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me, spiritually now, shall never die. And if you believe this, it is already going on in our life. The resurrection power is upon us. Right, I don't have much time, but I will skip Okay, in 1 Corinthians 15, okay, let's take it. So if the Son gives you life, you are alive in Him. You can be resurrected if you have no sin. You know what? Ang ginawa po ng Panginoon sa atin, kaya tayo pinatay kasi nagkaroon na ka-enter ang sin. Naka-enter 22 seconds. <laughs> Extension, five minutes. Okay, so what happens, you know, nung pong nag-separate ang tao sa Lord, nakapasok ang kasalanan. Kaya sabi nyo, for the wages of sin is death. So when nakapasok ang kasalanan, nakapasok ang kamatayan. Kasi kung may kasalanan, nagkaroon ng kamatayan. Do you know why Jesus did not die? Because He is sinless. And what He did when He died on the cross, he put to death sin. Isipin ninyo ang sin ay, ay literal. Ang tao. Sabi dito. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once and for all. Ibig ko sabihin, nung namatay si Cristo, sa binayaran po or pinatay niya yung sin nature natin. Tinanggal po yung sin natin. Amen. So now, our spirit now is sinless. That's why po, may resurrection time because or we can no longer die because we are sinless in the spirit. Okay, natin ko ba? Hindi nyo natin ba? Resurrection can only take place if someone's died. Ang ginawa po ng Panginoon sa atin, dahil noon sa history of creation, na nagkasala ang tao, nakapasok ang kasalanan sa pamamagitan ni Adan, sabi ng Bible, wages of sin is death. So noong nakapasok ang kasalanan, nakapasok ang kamatayan. Originally, wala tayo dapat kamatayan. But because of sin, nagkaroon ng kamatayan ang mga tao. So, we were living in sin. All of us, all, as sabi doon, we're all of sin. Kaya dapat lahat tayo mamamatay. In the spiritual pa, ha? Talking about spiritually. Now, what God did, when He died on the cross, He paid for the sin and He removed the body of sin. Sabi ng Bible. You know, the body of sin, para siyang tao na sin. Tinanggal ito, He died for sin. 
Binayaran niya yung kasalan. Kaya nga, noong nasa cross siya, sinabi niya, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he was full of the sin of mankind. Noong nasa cross siya, kinuha niya ang kasalanan ng buong na literally he became sin. And that sin he put to death. Kaya tayo ngayon malaya na hindi na tayo pwedeng mamatay sa spiritual. Yes, you said to me, Lord Jesus, I am the resurrection and life. If you believe in me, even if you die physical, you will live again because your spirit has no death anymore. Amen. Amen. So that's why we have the resurrection power in us. For since, look at this, He destroyed death. Who means the man? For Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first death of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through one man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Wala po siya sa Diyo sa Diyo. Death has no power. Amen. 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 And the final, in, in conclusion, anyone who believes in Jesus, <laughs> first, anyone who is a believer in Jesus, the resurrection of our, we should not focus on the death of Jesus anymore. Sa ating noon, sa religion natin, ano na kung saan ba yung galing religion, kung galing ako sa religion, na laging pinapakita ng kahandusay sa Jesus, laging patay, laging Jesus. But, the reality, the Bible said, on the third day, the rose of and Jesus is alive. Amen. The God that we are serving now is alive. Amen. And the good news is the resurrection power. Meaning, the life, when we died with Him, we also raised with Him. And the resurrection power is now living in each and every believer. Sabi, walang kasaysay ang Diyok, walang saysay ang ating pananampalataya kung hindi nabuhay si Jesus. Because kung hindi siya nabuhay, wala rin magkabuhay ang mga mananampalataya. But because He rose back, He was raised back to us. We also, even if we die in this body, we are sure that we are going to be alive in the the resurrection power is upon us. Imagine how powerful we are when the resurrection power of Jesus is upon us all. 
hindi po tayo talunan. Ang ginawa po ng Panginoon, He won the cross. Yes, He died, but He resurrected. And when He resurrected, the power is there. And that is what we have in us. Christ in us. The mystery that has been hidden for ages and now has been revealed to His saints. The mystery is that Christ is in you. Amen. Amen. The hope of the Lord. And the message of the resurrection is that Jesus has risen. We also have risen. Amen. Amen. Let's